This episode of Plastic Weekly is brought to you by Man Ellis and the rest of my Patreon supporters who help make this show by donating a dollar to each week. Man, thanks so much for the donations, and I had so much fun watching you at the Pan Am Bouldering Championships. I hope you have a ton of fun with the rest of your week in Montreal. So right now, it's about 10 to 11 uh, Wednesday night. I'm here in Montreal after doing some of the live streaming for the Pan American Championships uh, here at Horizon Rock. I'm really flipping tired. It was kind of a last-minute decision, uh, but I want to make sure I keep up with my schedule of putting out episodes. So um, I am releasing an, uh, an interview I recorded on Sunday with Kellen and Max, <coughs> some local Toronto folks. I'm recording this on a really crappy headphone uh, microphone, like the thing on the string of your headphones. Uh, so we're just going to get it out there. I just got to make it happen. Um, in this episode, we basically just chew the fat uh talking mostly about some new gear from asana some cool new climbing holds uh and then also kind of the ontario area and how we treat uh belay devices and uh and just belay techniques inside gyms in general talking a bit about standardization versus liberalization of our policies so haven't been able to do much editing on this because i'm i'm gonna go to sleep immediately after this publishes but uh, i hope you enjoy the conversation fortunately kellen and max brought up a lot of good points and i just made a ton of noise but anyway i hope you enjoy the stuff they talk about here it is so that was, that was before climbing that was saying. well i had just gotten a taste okay so before you were like <laughs> yeah. deep into it yeah okay, yeah cool yeah. i didn't know that uh anyway so yeah who's uh, who's talking right now so uh, well, we know who I am, but I'm joined by Kellen Tapley, who is, uh, I know you're the head root setter now at True North. What else are you? Uh, otherwise, I am, at the moment, the uh, co-head coach of the youth competitive team, along with uh, Adrian Caglia. Cool, man. And, uh, and from last time as well as Mr. Max Summerlee of Basecamp. How are you doing, Max? Uh, I'm good. I'm you know, you know me, wearing yeah, different man. hats every single day of the yeah. week. Always in a it. comfy sweater, always in a comfy sweater. I need That's to like be. These fans in here, <laughs> air circulation is important. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, um, I missed this last week. Like, I was supposed to do a group chat last week, but we were at the OCF comp, and, like, I thought, like, oh, yeah, it's a perfect time to, like, get some people together, but just you're exhausted after every single one. Um, yeah, well, I mean, there is some uh, interesting people there. Uh, I know. Been a good time. Yeah, Next everybody one. keeps hassling me yeah. to interview Ottawa yeah, people. Yeah, us a little before. Uh, well, can well get and some then I found out that one of the Ottawa people that I'm supposed to, that people want me to talk to, he just did an interview with uh, with Jeremy Dowsett from Climbing Hold Review. So now I gotta like wait, you know, because who wants to read two damn interviews about Jody Mile like in the same month, right? I mean, he's I'd pretty. Am- I, I'd listen. <laughs> he's pretty amazing. <laughs> I listened to that guy on the phone just uh, shooting the shit, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I feel like you guys didn't get to see these. Asana released these slopers. These okay, so it's not dual text. It's multi. Like multi. Multi. Yeah, yeah, three, yeah I, I saw a video on it. Three levels of textures. You've got the slick, like you know, slick texture on the back, and then when you get up to the grippable side, it's really hard to tell. But there's like, uh, like a not very grippy text, and then like the legit text. And they've got four of these things. Um, and I think I, oh yeah, we have a bit of internet. So there's four different shapes and the texture's different patterns on each sloper. So like so the sloper itself looks relatively similar between them. So like, but the texture spots where it's good is a little bit yeah. different sort of thing. Oh, yeah. yeah, so like all yeah. four shapes I think are, are the same geometry. So right, you're like, yeah. okay, it's a ball sloper, it's dual text. But when your hand gets up there, they're different. And so you're gripping in different spots. I think it's a really cool idea. I don't have a great background with Asana holds, and I've like I haven't been psyched about their dual techs in the past. It was like one of the least impressive I have found, but this actually looks shiny as balls. I'm kind of psyched for that, but uh, I don't know. I don't know how you guys feel about this concept. Did yeah, like, like I don't know. Well? Like being around for a bit, like uh, I'm I'm always sort of conflicted, being old and crotchety, and like what something new? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, <laughs> But, uh, no, this is an interesting idea in, uh, in terms of, you know, having to, to slow down a little bit and, uh, and, and really uh, take some time and care into how you're positioning yourself uh, and how you're trying to grab onto these grips. So um, I would love to play around with it for sure. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, yeah, no, I uh, haven't had too much chance to play around with the on uh, holds in the past. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's tough having not actually used these things before to really um, see which side of me is going to win out, the crotchety one versus the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the interested one. So uh, I think it's a very interesting idea, though. I, I, I have mixed feelings about the multi-text, for sure. I've definitely... There's some sets of holds that I've climbed on before, and they might even been a red point series where they're dual text right across the middle of your palm Ooh. when you're grabbing things, So, which That's is probably thrilling. the sweatiest part of most people's <laughs> hands as rock climbers, and it's a really, really interesting experience. But what I think is kind of cool about these, especially if they're all the same shapes, is that kind of idea of leveling a playing field, because hold knowledge is such an important thing in these comps, especially when every comp has a main yeah. dish or every yeah, kaiju you could put <laughs> in it, right? Um, and and for, for some gyms that don't have the budget to spend on it, all of a sudden, you know, you can be a little more technical with your climbs, and instead of it being knowing exactly where to hit, you've got to do a little figuring out. So I'm interested what, to see what they're like. What I think would be interesting to know on this, uh, I don't know, maybe it's in the, the video or maybe uh, someone knows, but like those different texts, uh, do they chalk, like when you look at them from the ground, if they're chalked up, do oh, they come yeah. through differently? I, I know they mentioned that they, they did look the same. Um, okay, so even when after you look it's at chalked, it, like it's, it should be really hard to tell the difference. Because you know you like try to chalk up like a dual text hold and... Like, yeah. Not, not fooling like anybody right? there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm curious how it's going to feel in your hands because I mean like a sloper of this shape, like this is the kind of sloper where you're making like full hand yeah. contact, right? And I just, I like... The texture, for the most part, is pretty far back, so I'm not sure if it's just going to change how much finger you're really putting mm. into your sloping position, or if this is going to be enough. Like the kind of mid-range texture is still going to be fine. I guess, so. like from a setting span standpoint, like if you're going to really use these to their full effectiveness, is like you have to be pretty on the mark about um, the movement, right? Like, oh, like you're gonna for, for the for the grade or whatever, like you're gonna be able to do this move if you hit it right, but not you know, on the bad part. So like getting the angle right, getting um, the, the intensity of the movement, um, it probably becomes like like a, a whole other challenge just in terms of root setting to, to really full, uh, take full advantage of this. Yeah, I mean, like everything, it'll come down to like whether you're a good, <laughs> a good, you a good, good setter or not. Um, yeah, I'm the, like Asana doesn't have a huge market share in North America, or sorry, in Canada, I should say. Like it doesn't show up very often. Um, I'm not sure if I was a root setter, if I would, like, I think I'd be willing to pay the price of this. Like, it doesn't seem too expensive for a, uh, for a set of holds, but I don't know if I'd go in for it because I don't really know what their colors are like. I'm I've not psyched about this particular blue. That's not a blue I want. Um, I've sat with their holds before yeah. at a former gym. We had their flooring, and they sent a bunch of holds uh, to us for some particular reason, and... Um, at least when I was using them four, three years ago, they're definitely uh, on the heavier side of holds that I've used. Mm -hmm. The colors did not match with our standard colors that we had. Um, and unfortunately, whether it was the pores that we had, a lot of the bolt holes were slightly misaligned, oh, um, yeah. which Funnily enough, that year I'd also been into the CWA, and even their sample holds they had at the CWA ah, had same rough. features to it. And so, yeah, I know what you mean. I don't know if a headsetter is going to look at that selection of holds and say those are at the top of my list uh, or even in the top five of my list. Yeah, that that being said, like, I, I don't know what they've done in the last yeah, you know, exactly. how long ago yeah. you said that was. Look, this is a look, kind of a fresh idea, and I could see some that the dual text being interested looks, in checking it out. Yeah, like the slick part looks far better than the slick I've ever seen on an Asana hold. I see it's got like a pre-drilled set screw hole, so like it looks like one of the highest quality products I've ever seen from them, so I'm pretty psyched about that. I hope it goes well. I, I would be really curious to see if they made it to... Um, uh, like ABS Nationals or something like that, or even just a national series event down there and maybe see how they actually climb when you put strong people on them, maybe see what the chalk looks like. But hopefully if there's a gym out there that gets them, uh, they maybe uh, send a review out there and let us know how they feel. But 
it's a neat idea. Like Brian Muse, I think is how you pronounce his name. He's a shaper that like is kind of stealthy, Ready. and he doesn't really like send his shapes to manufacturers that do a good job of advertising them. But they're the dopest they're shapes. They're pretty artistic. Yeah, yeah. they're wild. Um, but uh, he was experimenting with two different weights of foam on some holds where he would have like a really coarse foam on okay. the areas of a hold that you don't necessarily grab. Uh, and then like kind of a, a really tight, tight foam, uh, a small granule. I don't, I'm completely losing the word I'm looking for. Uh, but texture. just kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> texture. That's the one we're going for. Yeah. yeah. A really small texture on the gravel bit. And I think if he was dealing with like a sloper, he'd put a coarser texture, but it would all be in the same hold. So I think he was carving separate pieces of foam and like fitting them together. And that's what he would mold. That's and really interesting. Super sick. Yeah. I we have here at base camp, we have the, um, some of the Yanero line of holds, um, yeah. from atomic atomic. Toys and I mean, from a training perspective, the last texture that's on them, the better and yeah. realistically they're fantastic holds and they actually feel kind of silky to hold on to so it'll be really interesting to see if this zero level texture as i guess that they put it might be similar to something like almost no texture on it versus dual text i'm not entirely sure yeah well that's actually a really good point because i don't think i could stick to a sloper with this kind of radius if it was that kind of like atomic yanero texture because like yeah, I think I've only played with those Janeiro pockets, the new atomic ones, and they're like pretty comfy for pockets. But if it wasn't in cut, I don't think I'd stay in them. Yeah. There's no like. Mm. We only have the bucket jugs, and they're amazing, especially when you put them on a route that they get used often. Yeah. But um, so uh, l let me ask you, uh, like, how extensive is this set here? Um, there are four. I of saw them. like uh, the quick video of the like four slopers. Yeah. I think it was. But so does it so go beyond? This one has kind of like a gear, like cog shape thing, or like a sun shape texture print. This one seems to be like teeth, or just like a straight up rectangle. There's yeah, it's just slightly different, but the texture's still all the way at the back. Is it me, or are they different colors between the four of those as listed on the site, or is it the angle that might? Uh, I think at? it's probably the angle. Yeah. Let's actually that one does look a little different. Let's for like the we're talking about something visual. On yeah, the <laughs> hope you the, are all the, following along at home. <laughs> for the benefit of the doubt, let's say it's the lighting <laughs> of the uh, of the uh, photo shoot. But uh, yeah, I hope uh, th that's like I, I brought up like like how extensive is the line because like oh, oh no there sorry is more, there is more yeah as I scroll down there's oh, fantastic. Uh, there is it goes all the way to I which is what the <laughs> E F G H I so they got nine of them at least. Sick. We can do That's our alphabets. Yeah, no, seriously. I should have that. I worked in a library for a long time. I should really like know which where I come. That's in. part of the training, is it? Uh, well, knowing which number in the alphabet. I, knew, I like back in the day, like I had it, but oh, that man. was like ten years ago, I guess. But anyway. Man of many skills. <laughs> uh, the other gear stuff was kind of like local related. So we're going to talk about the lifeguard versus mm. the Grigri and how yeah. it's kind of starting to show up in gyms now. And I guess. We should paint the picture of like what the belay situation is at gyms in Ontario mm. because it's kind of not necessarily an outlier, but it's a really it's a bit different. I don't know if either of you want to take a stab at kind of describing <laughs> what the situation is. Hi, in you know what? I mean, I know you actually looked into it, kind of. Yeah, we looked at a bunch of different uh, devices, and I actually got to have a look at the geometrically assisted belay device that's coming out from. Black Diamond, the pilot, mm -hmm. which looks really interesting. And yeah. supposedly it works the same way as a mechanical, just doesn't have yeah. moving parts. But before that, what's the like? What's the situation with Ontario gyms? Like, how do uh, we deal with For the most part, here? we say Grigri -gri only. Yeah. But, and certainly at our facility, you're we, different at True North, yeah, right? Yeah, we take ATCs at ours. Are and you the only you ones? Um, uh, vertical reality back in Ottawa. I know they were taking others. Um, Do you have specific ATCs that you allow people to use? Um, I think no. We we can just because I was speaking with well, yeah, because it's tubular device, like, right? Like a tubular. Device. Um, okay. Jean Pierre, well at JP PB, yeah. uh, he came and visited me and showed me the pilot, and he was saying that uh, the standard ATC they don't sell in Quebec because they don't allow them to use them in gyms, but the uh, ATC or the XTC that they have. Um, they actually allow that, only allow that in Quebec gyms. So they sell mostly those. And I think it's because of the, 
Like the grooves? The grooves in them. I don't, um, that would be something he could answer, but it was a really interesting thing to hear that, you know, he essentially said, don't sell the regular one because realistically it's more usable to have the other one. And it's not a huge price difference between the two of them. Okay. Well, so in Ontario, if you come into Top Rope at an Ontario gym, the rope's already going to be hanging and the grigri's already attached, right? Yep. So you don't bring your own belay device for top roping. If you come in to lead at an Ontario gym, you will generally be expected to bring a grigri. There's, we can only name two gyms that allow you anything other than a grigri. Um, not only having your own grigri, but having your own rope. I don't think there's many gyms that actually rent ropes. Like, I haven't climbed a uh, one that rented Arc them. Arc does, I believe. Arc okay. and Sudbury does, as cool. far as I know. Um, and They're yeah, f- other than that, it's been U.S. gyms where I've I've uh, experienced that. Yeah. Renting so we're saying this, and there's going to be, like, a few Ontario gyms popping up. Like, hey, hey, no, we, we take, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, know. ATCs, and we let rent ropes. Well, you too. say Sudbury, and Sudbury is, like, one of the most out there Gyms totally. in terms of distance, they're yep. like almost in another. Well, they're in an orbit of their own, so they kind of can have their own rules. Um, but so yeah, for all the people in the states who are used to like being able to rent a belay device or rent a rope when you walk in the gym, you can't do that here. Um, and it sucks for people that come across the border because it's a crap surprise. And a lot of us don't even sell ropes necessarily. Like you got to find the local mech to grab something. Yeah, and it makes um, a high buy-in for new customers as yeah. well, right? Because when we say you come in and do your intro lead lesson with us, we say you got to have your own degree and you got to have your own rope and it needs to be at least this long, whatever the facility's yep. requirements are. So it definitely can be difficult. I see the merits of controlling the ropes and the belay devices that come through gyms for sure. Yeah. Um, but we also, you know, it also we have policies. Yeah, we have policies here. We've got our personal protective equipment policies. So we say that if your equipment is either too damaged or doesn't meet our standards, then we won't allow you to use it in here. Yeah. So uh, got to cover your one way yourself one way or the other, right? Yeah. So anyway, we've established that a couple gyms use other devices. Uh, a local gym, Boulders, uh, which has two locations in the Toronto area, they now allowed the Mad Rock lifeguard to be used for lead climbing at their facilities. When you go there to top rope, you'll still have to use the Grigri that's attached. Because it's already attached. Yeah, exactly, yeah. which is fine. And I don't, I don't understand the people that are like, can I take the Grigri off? I want to use my own. Just don't do that here. Um, but so anyway, the lifeguard shows up, and they're using it. Um, I'm super cool with this, first of all, because it's a cheaper device. The cheaper, lighter, yeah. smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all for on paper, it, yeah, it looks great. Yeah, and I, I, not to say Petzl has ever enforced any kind of, like, you know, cartel or anything like that in <laughs> Ontario. It's just been kind of what we've gone through, and I don't even know what the history of that is. For some reason, though, you know, we started with green Some sort reason. of chicken and the egg thing, but, yeah, like, exactly. you know I what? I for our gym, like, like our, our owner, like if if people start coming up and being like, "Yo, we want to use this belay device," um, like, and and more and more people start saying that, then he's gonna be on board. Like for for us, really, it's just he doesn't want to have to train staff how to you know properly you know inspect all these different devices and stuff so well, that's where it comes down to for us and that's the best thing about the lifeguard is because functionally it's, it's like a green yeah the, you, you everyone you can, knows if you're a gym that specifically teaches the break rope it goes in the right hand the lifeguard fits that same rule because uh, the lever's on the left, just like the Grigri. Um, so I can understand why you choose it over something like the Trango Cinch, which is a right-hand lever. Um, so functionally, it like you can teach a Grigri lesson, hand somebody a lifeguard, and they'll still have to get familiar with it because it looks different, but you thread it the same way, you close it, lock it, use it, like pull, yep. feed, lower, the exact same have way. Have you both used it before? I have. Yeah, I got a chance uh, uh, to use it at Aspire actually yeah. with the uh, manager there. It's a it's a great device to use and it feeds really feeds really nicely. Nice, eh? That's it yeah. really yeah. nice. I, I haven't had the chance to use it myself, but I'm I'm actually very interested in it. Um, I I believe I heard someone talk about it in terms of uh, setting on it. Interesting. Um, that it actually uh, like pulls through a little bit easier when you're you know up on the rope setting on, uh, mm. on a rope wall. And for someone you know I'm I'm in my mid 30s now. I've gone through you know. Uh, a torn labrum and the surgery involved with that surgery on my knee um like i'm constantly like trying to ease the wear and tear on my you know body so the that interests me a lot um i don't know if there's other setters out there that have uh that have tried 
getting on one of these uh, when they're setting roots and find that it's easier, you know, a little bit on the shoulder to haul up with, uh, let me know. I wonder too. Um, I have, I have a the Gree Gree Plus, mm -hmm. um, and I've actually kind of switched to using it now. Yeah. Uh, when I climb outside, because we also that's not something we're okaying in our facility yeah. yet. Um, so that has the ability to switch between a top rope and a sport climbing mode, and it essentially tightens that cam down, mm -hmm. yeah. and you can really notice the difference between those two modes more so than I thought you would. And I wonder if because of that tightness on uh, how much it bites on the rope, if that would also have an effect now of course that is not a rated hands-free device like the rig or the id yeah. and i know for example junction has moved to only using the id for their setting and yeah, that I might be where we're going yeah. hopefully it is realistically i feel like it's probably too late for something like the uh lifeguard to enter into the setting world just because you know if you're going to change your device i feel like you'll probably upgrade to something with a fail safe or yeah. something with a lock or anything like that um, but the cool thing for me is like Ontario's been pretty calcified for the most part about our safety standards with ropes. Like pretty well everybody needs a double stopper on. Uh, this same gym that just started accepting the lifeguard, they don't require you to have a, a you know a double stopper knot over your figure eight. I think that's really cool too. Um, as a you know former gym employee, I liked being able to see a figure eight and see enough knot that okay, you've got tail, it's not going to feed through, and you can see that from afar, right? I don't yeah. need to like get you, up close you to you to can. double check. Yeah, and I agree with you. Well, if I see two passes, I'll feel more comfortable if I see one. Uh, and and I think you know we are in a province and a country that doesn't necessarily have the same standardizations as a lot of other places do. Um, and I, I think there's a lot of good arguments moving towards standardization and therefore consistency of experience adds a lot to that. So I'm cool with them not having it. And we all know that like, as long as you have enough tail, then it's fine. But, um, in a province and a country that's considering, or these things might be happening, especially with the ministry of labor and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what that does to the climate that we have around safety. And, I, I, you know, part of me feels like the more consistent it is across these facilities, then the easier it will be to push towards standardization. Uh, and, again, lots of pros and cons for it. But uh, for me, it's a consistency. My staff go out in the gym, and there's always the double keeper, and that's what we're always looking for. And you're right, you can nail that down from across the yeah. gym. Yeah. So, and that's kind of the, the argument is standardization would make operations easier for all of us for the most part right we teach one thing we test one thing yep. we observe one thing we know exactly how you do it i find the lifeguard fits in a nice spot where it functionally works the same way as a gree gree so you have to change very little about how you operate the not things a bit different um you know i think ultimately if you got a strong figure eight you're probably okay but we might want different standards the last issue with it is the influence that outdoor climbing has on us where you're always going to see lots of different devices and anytime any friggin ridiculous belay device comes out there's going to be those guys that buy it because they're psyched on new gear and that's awesome and they're going to try and bring it to the gym um, and that's the part where i'm torn is i'm not sure if i prefer an environment where we have standards for you know rated equipment so whatever gear you use it should at least you know function properly and, and be a safe piece of gear um, and, you know, at the very least, the user should know how to use it. I'm not sure if I'm, you know, leaning towards that in gyms or if I'd rather have it as a gree, -gree lockdown or at the very least a left-handed lever lockdown or something like that. I don't know which I prefer indoors. I think operationally I'd rather teach less, um, but at the same time, like, I mean... I don't know how you guys feel about this. Well, that's, that's how I feel. But, like, in, in the end, like I brought up, like, y operationally, you have to train all these people to know all the ins and outs of any additional uh, device that you allow in your facility. So it just makes sense to me that there is some kind of, you know, standard across just a couple devices or, or you lock it down with three degrees and stuff. Um, Do you feel like future staff of climbing gyms will just be more experienced and maybe we'll have better managers and better staff instructors. Like, I mean, I think the caliber of 
the industry is improving. I think you have more mature people working in it and more people with more experience and they kind of understand What's your the turnover customers. like, Max? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is, I didn't see that on our list of topics here. Um, yeah, uh, well, it's an interesting thing you say because I don't know necessarily if uh, my staff are always going to be having more experience. Like, in the location we're in, we have, see a crazy mix of ability levels and peoples coming through the gym. Uh, same thing with my staff. I actually don't require my staff to be climbers to work here. Obviously, depending on their roles, they definitely <laughs> need to be climbers. But um, with the commercialization of the industry that we're in, I think just like we're going to see more different types of customers, we're going to see the same thing with our staff members. And I don't know if we necessarily will expect um, that to be happening at the um, same and i think that's reasonable for most gyms um but you know for those of us you've got now managers that have been working in it for a long time and a lot of us are gym people and we're not so concerned with you know flying around and taking on an, a new career like a lot of us are seeing this as the thing we want to do for a long time and if we're around and if we're the guys doing the training and writing the logs and we're building a level of professionalism somewhere in the organization i feel like we could get better at accepting more gear i understand the entry level will always be a mixed bag um, but gyms, I think, have more informed staff now. I don't know. Agreed, and I think uh, I, one of the points that Kellen brought up was the cost of, of training staff. I mean, obviously, that's a big thing, and I want to know that if a device is coming in that I don't, like, I don't know tons about these devices, I would really like to know more before I accept them in our facility, but with the experience of those people in the gyms, I also think about the market testing of products, and so Grigri has this massive history behind it of usage. Um, and then you get new devices like the Lifeguard coming out. And we try to err on the side company, of... From a company, basically. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and I, again, I don't know much about their testing processes or the, what the market testing has been done. And for us, we want to err on the side of caution and say, let's let that product be out on the market. Let other people use it for a little bit of time, see what happens with it. Uh, and then make the decisions to train our staff and bring people on. Because, I mean, like, even with, uh, uh, remember the Grigri 2 coming out and there is that recall, like, that's... That was right away, Pepsi, too. You know? Yeah, like... I still have one of those. I never <laughs> gave it back. <laughs> Me too. It's a, it's a rarity. And uh, if I really hope I don't forget this point as I'm saying this... Uh, the last argument in favor of liberalizing on some things is... If we choose to pick our battles in what we teach, so this is kind of talking about the not thing here in Ontario where we teach a figure eight plus a double stop or not. I feel like I'd rather spend the time teaching how to tie a really good figure eight than some time on the figure eight, some time on a double stopper, when the double stopper really it's has not no gonna, function. <laughs> it's not, yeah. not going to save you from anything, man. Yeah. Um, so... That kind of liberalization was saying, okay, we've got a couple habits that we should maybe acknowledge, maybe aren't super effective from an actual safety standpoint. Maybe we should, you know, reprioritize our time when we teach those intro lessons. But Hashtag standardization. Like, should we all be getting together and maybe talking about these things? I, I don't know, man. If we do, there's going to be nothing to talk about on this podcast. Mm. So preferably we do it here. I, I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel there's we're in the birthday room right now, and I feel like there's a birthday party coming, so Very I think soon, we should yeah. wrap this up. Um, I just wanted to thank both of you guys for hanging out downtown and talking about this. Kellen Tapley, thanks so much for uh, coming to chat. Yeah, absolutely. My honor for being here. And thank you too, Max. I appreciate hosting it again. Anytime. Thank you. That's it for this week's episode of Plastic Weekly. Thanks to Kellen Tapley and Max Summerlee for answering my questions. And thanks so much to you guys for listening and for dealing with the <laughs> low production quality this week. Plastic Weekly is presented and produced by me, Tyler Norton. If you like this episode, try and leave a review for it or consider donating a buck or two at my Patreon. That's uh, patreon.com slash plasticweekly. Uh, visit the website, plasticweekly.com, to find like pictures and footnotes uh, from all the episodes. And if you want to get in touch with me, you can leave a comment on the website. Uh, and you can follow on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can send me an email to tyler at plasticweekly.com with your comments, concerns, questions, compliments. Just let me know you're out there. 
somewhere. Good luck to everyone competing this weekend, including in the speed, difficulty, and combined events at the Youth Pan Am Championships in Montreal. I wish I could stay longer, but I gotta go. Oh yeah, good luck to everybody competing at the comp that I'm gonna be at, at Rock Oasis. We'll be thinking about you guys. Talk to you next week.